Welcome back everybody. So in today's episode we are going to do the small kitchen sink cabinet. Um, I really struggled with this cabinet, couldn't figure out in my mind what to do with it. So I ended up just mocking up um, a quick C-frame out of some Freebie 2 and then I just put a le little piece of 12mm um, ply in the top and just started scribing it and stuff. Um, the cabinet kind of came, came together just by creating and doing it. Um, it wasn't really designed. I had to make it fit into the, the van because the actual bed, the way it swings out, it hits cabinets that are too wide. So pretty much just scribed this top in, screwed it to the little C frame and then what we will do is I'll scribe in the two side pieces and then I actually make a pelmet for the front of the cabinet and I'll explain why in a few minutes now. So I'm just scribing in the cabinet here. I'll have to do this a couple of times, not only to scribe it in to the side of the van, but to actually get it squared as well, so you'll see this getting scribed a couple of times. So you can see here, the cabinet is basically finished. I've put the pelmet in the front of it, and the reason I've done that is because the sink that I've got is 24 centimeters wide, and it would hit. So you see here, the sink is in, and the little pelmet, the way it curves in, it allows the sit to, sink to fit in. So the sink will be recessed into the top of the cabinet. It's actually a little salad bowl. I've got to actually put a little sink waste in the bottom of it. So. We'll recess that in, and this is actually what I've got for the tap. So this is a little bilge pump. Uh, you've got an infeed here, which will go into your water tank, and the other exit will go straight up into your tap. And what you do is this will be on the floor, and when you pump it with your foot, it'll actually pump water out of the tank and up to the tap. Then all you need to do is connect your waste to the bottom of the sink into a waste bucket. And that's your sink done. No electrics. Fairly simple. I think it's a good, good little setup. Um, the 12 volt pumps, I've heard, can be a little bit noisy. Plus, you need power in your van. The van doesn't have any power. I want it to be a little simple cam micro camper. So that's the way I've done it. This is the actual finishing off the pelmet. I just put a little bit of free mill ply, and we've got to bend it in. With it being free mill, it can bend very easily. So just glue it bend it in and I've got to put a few pin nails in with the nail gun. Just a little plastic block, I've got to screw that to the side of the cabinet to fix it to the side. Put a little bit of a 2 by one batten in the back, that's got to fix it to the other side. And just know when you're taking your nail gun apart, point it away from you because nails can fire out of it when you're disconnecting the air hose. So just checking that the bed fits now, it swings out, clears the cabinet and we've got enough room for our sink. Just putting a little bit of stick all on the back of this pelmet just to secure it in. And that's the sink cabinet finished. What I've actually done here is I've used uh, aluminium foil to cover up all the holes in the van. The reason we've done this is because dirt will permeate through the holes if you do not cover them. Aluminium foil is a great way of doing that. Done it all down the driver's door, pillars, everything. I've actually just covered up as much as I can here for the carpeting because I don't want to get any overspray in the van. 
and here we go. Got to start camping. Got to do it all in one piece. I don't want any joints on the roof joints. I want it all to be one piece. Make sure you wear a uh, mask, guys, because this stuff does smell very bad. And also, test your spray before you start spraying it. Just to see the spray pattern. And also to make sure the it's not clogged. So what I'm doing is I'm starting at the back of the van, very top. Got a spray on, the spray foam onto the roof and onto the carpet. I'm going to do it in two to four inch strips. Stick it on and then what you do is just apply even pressure. Push out from the center. Make sure there's no wrinkles. And what this carpet is, it's a four way stretch carpet. So you can actually stretch and bend the carpet around things. Not too much to stretch it around on the roof but you can do it if you need to. So what I would know is not to spray the whole roof in one go and try and stick it in one go. It won't work. You'll make a right mess and you'll get a ton of wrinkles in your finish. Spray it in four to eight inch strips. Spray your roof, spray your carpet. Let it dry, let the solvent dry and go tacky and then adhere it to the roof. And pretty much rinse and repeat until you get to the back of the roof. Now you probably see here, I actually peel the carpet off a little bit because if it does stick to something and you're not happy with it, you can peel it off. You do have a little bit of time to peel it off, so just be aware that you don't need to. Just accept that there's wrinkles in there, pull it off, do it again, get it nice, get a really, really good finish on it. Now the roof is actually done here now, so what I'm going to do is start at the very top of the side of the van and work my way down. Again, doing it in 4 to 8 inch strips, apply pressure evenly and smooth the cap out from the top down, centre out, and you won't get any wrinkles that way. actually using a couple of clamps just to hold the carpet up um, makes it a little bit easier makes it a bit more manageable especially for the way that I'm doing it here probably not the way you should be doing it I don't want any joints you see so this is the way I decided to do it it got a really nice finish at the end but it was more difficult doing it all in one piece you might be better off doing it in three pieces and having the joint around along the roof line so here I'm just pushing it in around the wheel well, getting all that nice and tight and then we're going to just finish off around the door edge and trim all that up. Just trimming it all the way here now, leaving a little bit of excess. I'll do the final cut later on. And we have a little performance here from Nathan. itching to get onto the YouTube video. <laughs> so here we have the side of the van fully carpeted there now. 
Nicest move, no joint on the roof line. Leave, leave excess on the floor, you can always cut it away if you need to at the end. But if you cut it away and you need some carpet there, then there's nothing you can do. You can try and join it and stuff, but you're gonna just make a mess. So leave excess at the floor, you can always trim it away later on. Just doing the other side of the van now, starting at the top. Now bearing in mind that there is the, the slide rail here for the slide door on the side. And I want to try and carpet that, so just cap it up to it and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Push it all down the side of the van. Same as before. Rinse and repeat. where the stretch carpet really comes into its own when there's a lot of contours and curves you can actually push and, and the carpet and stretch it around the, the curves and get a really nice finish very nice carpet to work with actually very impressive it Actually, I actually found that the, the back of the Stanley blade was a very good tool for getting it into the creases and the edge of it was very good for straightening out on the, the flat bits. This was actually my first time cap it in a van and I think it came out really well for my first time. A couple of wrinkles on the left hand side of the back door and that was it. No wrinkles anywhere else apart from that. I was very happy with the result in the end. Just another thing to note actually that I never mentioned is the adhesive I'm using is a high temperature adhesive. If you don't use the high temperature adhesive in the vehicle, when it heats up on a hot day and it gets really hot inside, the adhesive can fail and you can get all the carpet falling down. So just the thing to know is when, if you are going to carpet in the inside of your van, use a high temperature adhesive. Hey, lazy dog. Lazy dog. Lazy dogs in the sun. So you can see here the rail for the sliding door. I've carpeted up to it and we'll finish it off with the standard blade, get it all nice and neat and tuck it in around the edge. Make a nice finish on it and it looks really good when I finish it. I actually didn't know how I was going to finish this before I started, but sometimes you just got to start, make a go, have a go at it and you'll be surprised sometimes how, how, how good stuff can turn out. Take your time and be patient, that's that's one thing. Don't rush it. Took me the day to cap at the back of the van. I haven't done the doors yet. So that's uh, an estimation of how long it's got to take you, if you've got to do it properly. Just when you're trimming around the doors as well, trim up to the door edge, and then when you put your rubber on at the end, the carpet will sit under the rubber, not on the outside of the door, because if it does sit on the outside of the door, then you've got to get water soaking through and into the van so cut it off flush to the door edge just finishing off the top of the ceiling here this is where the plywood joins to the factory headliner and what I actually do is cut it really tight to the plywood leave a little bit of a gap and I push it up into the plywood with the back of the standard blade and it actually comes out really nice Considering that I'm joining a carpet and the headlining together, I think it comes out really well.
so just finishing off the final cut on the back doors now. Nice and flush to the edge, trim it all the way around and then we'll put the rubber seal on. Should have really got um, some sort of hammer to bash these, these seals in. Doing it your hands is not the best thing. You have to give it a bit of a whack, but it worked out alright in the end. What I'm doing here is just fixing the door catches back to the roof again, leave them loose, and then close the door and tighten them on fully. That way you can line them up with the back door, get it really nice and tight, so when you close the door, it seals the vehicle properly. Uh, reattaching the the guides for the back door hooks, fitting them back on and then just giving a good tighten up with the screwdriver because they were very tight to come off so I'm just doing them back to roughly the same torque as they came off. Just tidying everything up here now. Get it all tidy and then we are going to use some white spirits and what that does is it'll take off any little bits of overspray that might have got around the vehicle. There's a little bit on the headlining up here and a little bit on the door sill on the side and that's pretty much it really. So just if you do get any overspray it will come off with uh, white spirits. One thing to note is don't use any blue paper or anything like that because I've heard that the, the, the colour can transfer onto the carpet. Use a clear cloth, well, I used a white cloth, something with no colour in it. And this is the finished product guys, so thanks for watching. Tune into the next one and we've got to finish off the bed, finish off the sink cabinet and maybe even get them all painted. We'll see how we get on, hopefully that's the goal. Thanks for watching, see you later. Yeah.